Hi, this is Nebatri and today I'm going to give a presentation on the topic Spectrum Sensing in Cognitive Radio and Implementation of Frequency Hopping Scheme in Uncoordinated Cognitive Radio. Efficient use and proper allocation of the radio frequency spectrum is very important since the availability of the RF spectrum is very limited. The allocation of spectrum is controlled by the government bodies of different countries like FCC for the United States of America and are allocated to the licensed users in order to avoid harmful interference between different frequency bands. This leads to unnecessary wastage of the RF spectrum. Cognitive radio is an intelligent technology that allows the secondary user to borrow the spectrum from the primary licensed users, leading to an efficient use of the spectrum. It adjusts the communication parameters such as carrier frequency, bandwidth, modulation techniques, and changes the transmission and reception accordingly. The primary task of the cognitive radio network is to detect the presence and absence of primary users in order for the secondary user, users to sense the network and use the license band efficiently. It senses the spectrum continuously and once a primary user is detected, it instantly withdraws to avoid interference. The cognitive radio is flexible in terms of transmission characteristics and improves the spectrum utilization. So it is also called dynamic spectrum management scheme. Spectrum sensing is the first and the most basic step of the cognitive radio cycle. The next step is to capture the next available spectrum and this step is called spectrum management in cognitive cycle. Then the cognitive radio user exchanges its frequency of operation and this step is called spectrum mobility. The last step in the cognitive cycle is spectrum sharing which refers to providing a fair spectrum scheduling method among users. These are the various spectrum sensing methods. Match filter is the best method if the structure of the primary user waveform is known and cognitive radio is implemented only in selected primary user bands. It is considered to be the best for most frequently sensed channel to get the most optimum sensing results with the minimum sensing time. This can be used in various applications such as smart grid, disaster management and many other applications. The secondary user analysis is based on power and band of interest, regardless of whether the primary user waveform is known or not. Then the secondary user selects the energy detector or cyclostationary detector if the primary user waveform is not known and match filter if the primary user waveform is known. However, cyclostationary detection is preferred over the energy detector if the noise uncertainties are not known and energy detectors are preferred if the noise uncertainties are known. Here, XT is the signal received by the cognitive radio user or the secondary user and YT denotes the signal transmitted by the primary user or the licensed user. WT is the additive wide Gaussian noise band and H is the amplitude gain on the channel. H0 is called a null hypothesis which states that there is no primary or licensed user in the spectrum and H1 is, the alt is called the alternate hypothesis which states that there is a licensed user in the spectrum. These are the basic two equations or concept that is used behind spectrum sensing in cognitive radio. These are the consecutive steps that are used for the energy detection method in the project. The input signal is filtered using a bandpass filter in order to limit the noise and get the concerned bandwidth. The output E from the integrator is then compared to two threshold values lambda 1 and lambda 2 in order to determine if the signal is present or not. The energy from the, that we get as an output from the integrator can be represented from the equation given in the slide. If 
we consider that if the, if the energy value is greater than the predefined threshold lambda 1, then the primary user is present. And if the energy value is less than the predefined value, uh, value of the threshold lambda 2, then the primary user is absent. And if the energy value lies in between lambda 1 and lambda 2, then it goes to a region of uncertainty. And we consider that the energy detector is not reliable enough for the energy detection process. The two main concepts behind the energy detection process is null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. H0 is called the null hypothesis and H1 is called the alternate hypothesis. So we can get exactly one of H1 or H0 to be true. So there can be generally two sources of error. One where we detect alternate, but it is actually null, which is called the false alarm. And the other type, which is more important, is to detect the null when it is actually alternate hypothesis. False alarm reduces the spectral efficiency and misdetection causes interference with the primary users. So it is essential to optimize both of them. Probability of H1 given H1 is called probability of detection. Probability of H1 given H0 is called the probability of false alarm. And probability of H0 given H1 is called the probability of misdetection. Probability of false alarm is also called type 2 error. And probability of misdetection is all, is, can be called type 1 error. Both of these errors should be very small for a proper spectral sensing, but it is not possible to reduce both of them simultaneously as reducing one can increase the other. So a trade-off has to be maintained and the ultimate goal of designing a detector is to minimize type 1 error while keeping the type 2 error in bound. Type 1 error, that is the error of misdetection, is more important for the efficient working of the energy detector. But at the same time, type 2 error has to be minimized. The main objective of cognitive radio is dynamic spectrum access, thereby reducing the problem of spectrum scarcity and enhancing spectrum efficiency. One of the major challenges of cognitive radio is the coordination between the secondary transmitter and the secondary receiver in order to use the same channel. Medium access control protocol or the MAC layer protocol is an alternative approach which relies on prior handshaking and white space knowledge sharing. So the main objective is to develop a transmission scheme which would work reliably without prior handshaking between the secondary user without causing an interference to the primary user, even in cases where spectrum sensing errors are literally unavoidable. Frequency hopping spread spectrum works reliably without any feedback and we can get a trade-off between the interference with primary users and the data rate for secondary users if we use the frequency hopping spread spectrum scheme. In designing the system for the frequency hopping spread spectrum, the wireless spectrum which is occupied by a primary user has been divided into J subdivisions and it does each spectrum segment is denoted by x suffix j where j varies from 0 to j minus 1. Each spectrum segment is again subdivided into k frequency bands. So at any point x suffix j comma k stands for the j channel and the k -th spectrum segment. Before a secondary user selects a spectrum segment XJ, it must look for the availability of all the J channels in the segment. By adapting the scheme, the data required for the white space detection in an RF spectrum can be determined when a secondary user is using some other spectrum segment. SI, N is a transmitted sequence of N chips of symbol SI, where I varies from 0 to I minus 1. The chip SI, N is transmitted over a channel in the spectrum segment XI. In each frequency segment, the transmitter and the receiver has to choose from an available channel to transmit the chip. To minimize the risk of mismatch between the transmitter and the receiver, they use a binary sequence, say YN, where YN is either 0 or 1 to determine whether a white space can be selected or not. 
The secondary transmitter finds a sequence which is denoted by the equation 1 and from there if x j suffix, x suffix j comma k is 1 it is considered to be selectable and 0 if it is 0 then it is considered to be not selectable. The secondary receiver finds a sequence which is denoted by equation 2 and similarly if 5j comma k is 1 it is considered to be selectable and if it is 0 it is considered to be not selectable. The JF channel in the K1 spectrum segment is selected by the secondary transmitter for transmission only if the transmission value is 1 and otherwise it is aborted. Similarly, the JH channel in the K2 spectrum segment is selected by the secondary receiver for reception only if the transmission value is 1 or else it is aborted. Thus, the channel for the transmission and reception is selected. If the K1 spectrum segment is equal to the K2 spectrum segment, then the transmission is considered to be identical and the transmitter and the receiver uses the same channel for transmission. And if they are not equal, then there is a transmission mismatch. For the frequency hopping spread spectrum demodulation, the received baseband signal is found out by the matrix given. We can calculate the SNR of the received signal from the equation 3. And equation 4 gives the average number of correct white space detected in case of both transmitter and receiver. The average channel mismatch probability is given by the equation 5. So for M repeated transmission, we have the average number of transmission that are error free, which is denoted by the equation 6. This is a plot showing the energy detection process. In the leftmost plot, we are finding that we are getting a global minima at around 28 for n equal to 8. This is the optimum, optimum threshold for the least error rate. And the error rate comes out to be 10 from in between 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 2 dB. I'll show the code that I have written. This is the code for the energy detection process and this is the code that I have written for the frequency hopping spread spectrum. I have generated an artificial baseband signal for the analysis at, at, and a 25 bit white pattern has been generated using random samples from the standard normal distribution. This bit sequence has been shown in the figure. In this figure it's showing the input sequence is further modulated i created four frequency to be hopped the logic is to form a multinomial selection as in randomly selected one of the frequencies this figure shows the fourier spectra of the frequency hopping spread spectrum signal in this project, I have done an elaborate study on different spectrum sensing schemes and also implemented the frequency hopping scheme of a non-fading AWGN channel. However, in future, I would like to extend my work and do an elaborate study of, of the spectrum sensing scheme in case of fading channels such as Raleigh fading channel. I would also like to study the power efficiency and the spectral estimation of fading channels. Due to time constraints, I could not study the changes in bit, bit error rate with SNR under various spreading gain and mismatch probabilities. I would like to thank Dr. Da Peng Hu for giving me this wonderful opportunity to work in this project, which helped me learn a new technology like cognitive radio. Thank you.